Hey guys, what I've got here on my desk is a selection of cameras and lenses that I use to record videos on YouTube. What's missing from this is, well, it's the cameras and lenses that I'm using to record this video right now. My main setup, my permanent fixed live streaming and recording setup has two main cameras and two webcams. I'm using a Sony a6500 here and I'm using a Sony RX10 Mark II above me for the overhead camera. But that's complemented by two webcams. I've got two Logitech Brios, one on each monitor. Now I'll talk about all of that in a bit because what I'd like to do in this video is talk about the strengths and weaknesses of each of these cameras and talk about what I like, what I don't like and talk about the limitations of each piece of equipment. It's going to be a long video. I make no qualms about that. This, this is going to be a long video because I'm going to be talking about each of the cameras, but I'm also going to be talking about my recording setup and just kind of explaining how I record videos. So I did a video through the week about the Sony ZV-1 uh, vlogging cam or vlogging camera, if you want to call it that. And this was my first indication to you guys that I am thinking about selling some of these cameras and upgrading. And this is without doubt an excellent camera. The footage is on it. it the footage from it is great. The, the microphone quality is great and all that. And it ticked, ticked a lot of boxes for me as far as, you know, something portable, etc. But I don't like the, the focal length. So it was a little bit too zoomed in for me. But I did receive a few uh, comments in my video about it uh, from David Harry and Evil. And one of the things that Evil said was really what I'm trying to address in this video, saying, I'll be honest, nothing to do with this camera. I don't think you need any more equipment for a while because there's nothing wrong with them. You've got enough stuff to make a high quality amateur film pr production, multiple cameras, multiple action cams, multiple mics, audio interfaces, phones and lights. So yeah, Evil's 100% right. I do. I could go out and I could record really good videos and vlogs with this equipment. And I do think that there's a lot of YouTubers, and I'll include myself in this, they look at the latest gadgets, the latest equipment, and you think, I must buy that. It will make my videos better. And I am guilty of that sometimes because you can make great content and great videos with the equipment that you've got. But tech moves forward as well. And some of the cameras that I've got here are quite old now. This M50 is only two years old, but this RX10, uh, RX100 Mark III, sorry, that's about seven or eight years old now. This is several years old as well. And a lot of this equipment, still good, still usable, but there's so many better options in the market. So yeah, that's what I'd like to explain in this video. So. With the introduction out the way, let's talk about my setup. Let's talk about it, right? So with the main camera that I've got right now, the one that I'm using is the Sony, oh, headphones are dropping down there. The Sony A6500. Now, th there are new versions of this range out. The original range was the A6000, A6300, A6500, and A6500 was the most expensive. Now, they've now come out with, uh, I think, 6100, 6300, 6600. And those, the 6600 is obviously the upgrade to this, but the 6500 is still an excellent camera. It can do 4K. It's, um, you know, there's a great selection of lenses for it. And, you know, if you're a YouTuber or just someone who's looking to buy, uh, to, to make videos and you try to do it cheaply, you might want to look one generation behind. That's what I've did with all of these cameras. The Sony camera, this Sony camera, this Sony camera, that Sony, I've got a lot of Sony cameras, I've just realized. All of these cameras, even the Canon M50, I've bought all of these used. Now, some of them I bought used short, like this one I bought, I think it was just a few months after it was released, but you will save a lot of money going one generation behind and camera equipment can be expensive. So I opted for the 6500. If you're looking to get this kind of quality, then yes, this is what you would have to buy. So the 6500, I'm happy with it. I am not selling it. I will, I will be using this for years. I don't see myself upgrading. But the lens it came with was this. This is, oh, I'll jump over to this. This is the lens that it came with. And I'll zoom down a little bit so you're not just looking on my whole desk. So this is a 16 to 50 millimeter lens. So it's got a, like a little zoom lens there and you can actually use that with, I've got a remote control for the 6500 and I could just, you know, push minus and plus and zoom in and out. And that was quite useful actually in a few situations, but this is not the greatest lens on the market. You know, you can pick up secondhand for like 70, 80 pounds or so. It's not a bad lens, not by any means, but it certainly was not good enough for what I was looking for. So I replaced the lens. I replaced it with this. This is the Sigma 60mm 
f1.4. So this is a prime lens, which means it is fixed. It doesn't zoom in. And f1.4 means that you get really good bokeh with this, but it's got really good autofocus as well. So this is the lens that I've got on my Sony a6500 now. It's not a small lens, it's a big, big lens. But it is, it is a good lens and, it, and it's pretty good what it can do. So the f1.4 means that you can get, you know, the kind of bokeh blurry effect in the background. And that means uh, that, you know, if, if it zooms in on something, everything else kind of, like I'll try and get in. Can I just point out, see how I'm blurry in the background now? Now, the reason that's all kind of um, bright there is not because of the camera. So there you can see the everything else is blurred out. But you can see the autofocus there. It's really good, isn't it? It's pretty quick. So for my needs, this camera is great. But I will point out, see that you saw all the lights, you know, kind of shining there. That is not the lens. That is because my lighting setup here is really set up for everything going for this camera. Is I've not set it up so that I can, you know, do, you know, product showing to this camera. And I know I do it occasionally, but I really do use the overhead camera with that. And with my lights, what I've did with the Elgato key lights is I've set it up with my stream deck, which I'll show you with the overhead camera. I've set it up here so that I've got lights there. And I've, I normally switch between these two percentages. And what I've got is, I've got to set up that when I click on the overhead camera, the lights go brighter. When I click on the main cam, the lights go down. Click on the overhead camera again, and the lights go back up. So that's something um, that I'm kind of toying with recently. But that's why that was a little bit too bright there. But the Sony A6500, fantastic camera, the fin a fantastic lens. I've not actually reviewed this lens yet, and there's actually quite a few pieces of equipment here I've not reviewed. I've not reviewed a lot of this actually, so yeah, you're getting your first glimpse in the, my first opinion on a lot of these products. So the other camera is the Sony RX10 Mark II. That is what I'm using for the overhead camera. Now the greatest thing about that is I can zoom in from 24 to 200 millimeters, like that. The later versions of this can go up to 600 millimeters, which is just insane. But I'm just, now you don't actually normally see this, but I'm just going up and just adjusting the zoom just like I, I would be with this one and I'm just going up and down now you can see here what I'm doing with it it goes all the way up to here kind of shows my whole desk but if I show you again we'll use a Sony action camera I'll show you how much we can zoom in so we can zoom in all the way to there and this is what I use for product reviews as you guys know I do a lot of unboxings I do tutorials and different things and this helps me get in close, but it also helps me show you multiple devices because there's a lot of situations where I need to show many different things in the clip. And I'm shaking the desk here, which is why that's moving around. The Sony RX10 series, in my opinion, is one of the best options for an overhead camera. It's a bridge camera, which means that you can't go out and buy other lenses, but the lens that's included with it is excellent. And for me, it just works. It just it's the perfect device. And the great thing I like uh, about you know one of the reasons why I'm buying a lot of Sony cameras is that they all support USB charging. So I've got this Sony A6500 and this Sony RX10 Mark II plugged in at all times. USB cable plugged in, and it's always charged. I, you know, I just, it just charges whenever I need to use it. I don't have to worry about battery life because it's just plugged in effectively to the mains. So. This is the Sony RX10 Mark II, but obviously I've got the original, the Sony RX10, which we'll talk about soon. And that's why I knew this one was, was going to be good. And I will say, I picked that up. You might remember this. I did a video about the RX10 uh, Mark II. I picked it up for like £210 because someone sold it as broken, despite the fact it wasn't. So, yeah, absolutely excellent. I love these two Sony cameras. I don't see them changing. You know, I'm not going to be changing this for a couple of years anyway. I don't, I don't think so. And if I do change any of these cameras, they will be, you know, kind of downgraded to another part of my setup and I'll probably still use them for a few years more. So these are the two main Sony cameras that I use to record and it's how I switch between the main camera and the overhead camera. But the other two cameras that I use are Logitech Brios. So this is a popular webcam. It can do 4K, but I just use it at 1080p. And if I click on, uh, sorry, this one, this is the webcam. This is the webcam that's above my ultra wide monitor. Now, what you'll see right away is that it doesn't look that good right now. It doesn't look that good. And the reason is 
All the lighting that I've got, again, like I was saying, all the lighting is set up for that camera. So if I had to adjust this lighting and move them into different positions to kind of complement this position, then the camera would look better. But you can see how good this camera is if I change to the browser. So right now I've got my main Sony camera here in the corner, but sometimes I will be using the browser over here. So what I do is I use the webcam. So you can see there, you know, I can change the webcam to this position for, you know, when I'm browsing the web. And what I'm trying to show you here is that the Logitech Brio webcam, I think it looks good. I think it's good enough that you could use it on its own. But when you use it with the browser, I think it, it kind of removes a lot of the problems with it because, it, you know, the, the, the picture is shrunk down. And that's how a lot of people will use a webcam. You can use it as your, your you know, your whole video for your whole video. And I have did so many times in the past. But I think a webcam works best when it's just kind of in the corner. So the Logitech Brio works great for that. I'm really happy with it. It's been one of my, you know, my best purchases. And again, this is another piece of equipment that I don't see upgrading for a few years. I think that kind of quality of footage is more than acceptable for just putting in the corner of, um, of your browser like that. But when I have been using this, you know, putting the browser underneath this camera, which I like doing because I'm facing this way anyway, the quality is better. So you can see there, like there's the, the difference in quality. You can see that it is better there. Of course, it's going to be, it's a, it's a you know, a camera that's several hundred pounds and a, a lens, that, which is like 400 pounds to buy. So it's going to be better. But this Logitech Brio, you can pick up for about 150. It's probably more right now because of the pandemic, but it really does punch above its weight. And I think it's a great webcam. And um, the reason I've got two, the reason I've got two, well, firstly, I bought a second one because I was trying to, you know, I was doing videos downstairs as well, which I'm not really doing anymore. But the reason I've got two permanently attached to my computer here is for interviews. So it's for like Zoom interviews, Skype interviews, and it's for when I'm bringing someone else into this video. And you saw it like last month, my friend Kevin joined me in a live stream and he was, you know, here's the thing. You guys saw, saw his video and you saw my video. Now, when you saw me talking, you either saw this camera, the Sony 6500, or you saw that webcam. What you didn't see is what Kevin saw. Kevin saw my second Brio. So here's how it works. The two Sony cameras and the Logitech Brio, those are essentially the three cameras I use to record footage for YouTube. That other camera is only for the guest. The only person who sees the footage from, from this webcam, from this Logitech Brio, is a friend or a guest who's talking to me. And what it means is when I'm in Skype, when I'm in Zoom, I will select that second Logitech Brio. I think it's called the Brio Stream Edition. And I, you know, I, I assign that webcam to them. So when I'm recording, you guys will see this, but they will see me from a different angle. Now, there's actually another way around this. You don't have to have two webcams to show one webcam to your audience and show one webcam to your friend or your guest on Skype, etc. You can use software. There's a lot of applications out there that allow you to duplicate your um, webcam or your camera. And essentially, they kind of just split the signal and you'll have like a software version of it. It's maybe a bit a bad explanation, but what you can do is you can have Brio and then you can have Brio dash something. And the, the signal is essentially duplicated. That's the simplest way to look at it. And it means that you can use that duplication on, you know, and assign it to Skype or Zoom, etc. The reason I prefer to webcams is because when you're using software to kind of duplicate an image, you know, so that you can put it to two different sources, Skype and OBS or whatever your recording software is, the reason I, I prefer to use two webcams is simply because doing that uses up a lot of CPU resources because, you know, your computer has to work harder to process that. And it's just easier to plug in a webcam. It just, it, I just find it a simpler setup. Now, what I will say, though, if you're planning to add a webcam to your recording setup, and I, I would suggest that, yes, I am using, you know, I've got a lot of these um, recording devices I've got. A cam link, I've got two Elgatos, I've got two Magewells, I've also got this one which I'm testing soon as well, HD video game capture. And I've got all these capture devices that allow me to capture things from, uh, you know, from cameras. But you don't have to buy a, a video capture device. If you, I, I mean, I, I would say that everyone needs a webcam in their setup. I think everyone needs a webcam 
of some kind in a setup, just for something to plug in, and then you've got a camera, even if it's only for interviews, etc. But if you are, for example, doing videos where you're browsing the web like this and you're you know giving your thoughts on something, a webcam is great. If you're doing game streaming, a webcam is great. Now, for that kind of thing where you're just showing your, your webcam in the corner of the page, I would say that the Logitech Brio, you could argue that it's overkill. There's a lot of cheaper Logitech webcams that you could use in the corner of your video and you don't have to spend like 150, 200 on the webcam. You could get something really cheap and as long as you've got good lighting, that webcam will look good, especially if you've shrunk the image and put it to the corner of your game or of your, you know, your browser. But you can go even cheaper. This is a webcam, which, yeah, I did a video for this one. This is the Gucci HD92. And for all, the, for all intents and purposes, this is not a good webcam. It was like 15 pounds. It's very, very cheap. And even just, you know, playing around with it, it feels cheap. But if you're doing a, a Skype or a Zoom interview, it really doesn't matter how good the footage is for the other person. So because this is obviously not being shown to them. So if you're doing, if you need a, a second webcam to plug in so that you can record, you know, footage for Skype or for Zoom, etc., just buy something at 10 or 15 bucks. But I will say, even for this, see if you've got lighting good enough and you shrink this image to the corner of your page, this webcam's actually quite good and you could get away with it. I really do think even if you've got a top channel, you've got 100,000 subscribers, you could use a really crappy webcam as long as you've got good lighting and as long as the, you know, the image is kind of shrunk in the corner. So yeah, it's just a reminder that you don't always have to spend a ton of money. Lighting is a big issue as well. So that is really a summary of all the equipment that I've got for this setup, for what I'm recording with right now. So before I go on and just talk about all of these cameras and lenses and why some of them are perhaps not at the level that I want, I want to just quickly go around my recording setup. Now, I, I was showing you before, this is my stream deck. And if I zoom in here, you can see a lot of the, the different scenes. Now I've actually got more than these, but I've got the webcam, I've got the main camera, I've got the browser with the webcam, I've got the overhead camera, I've got my game streaming camera, which I've not got the game plugged in just now, but that switches to that. And then I've got my 20, my 27 inch monitor and my gaming monitor, which is hard to see the text there, just the way the light's catching it. But yeah, so I've got all of that. Now, how I've got my recording set up, I mean, everything's going through OBS, but how I've got it set up is for quick transitions and for quick recordings. I hate spending a ton of time putting memory cards in and out. I realize that's good for, you know, you're doing a proper video, you're doing, you know, you're making films, you're going outside and making high quality productions. But inside, I think speed is important. So I've made my whole setup and I've built, built it all on the premise of recording videos quickly and efficiently. So I've got the main camera, I've got the browser, I've got the overhead camera, I've got the webcam. I've also got the ultra wide monitor. This is what I've um, got in the background here. This is just my ultra wide monitor. And then I've got my gaming monitor. This is, you can see that OBS is there. That's what I'm recording with right now. And you can see all these different scenes, all these different scenes I've got, interview group, interview one-on-one. -on -one. These are all different setups with the camera and with the browser and just different setups with each of the cameras in, in different situations. And that's the, that's the beautiful thing about OBS is that even with one camera, you can create different setups. So that's how I've got it all set up as far as streamlining the recording between you know all my different cameras. And I've kind of got most of the angles I want as far as the overhead camera, the main camera, and the webcam. So what else have I got on my desk? Um, <clears throat> I'll work backwards and kind of start with smartphones. Smartphones are not something I'm looking to sell. It's not like I'm, um, I'm buying, I'm not really buying smartphones specifically for the camera capabilities as far as keeping them for years. But whenever I buy a smartphone, I am looking to buy one that can record good video. Now, what I would say about smartphones is, we're now at the point where if you buy a really good smartphone, the stabilization is probably still not great, but phones tend to be pretty good vlogging devices as far as they're always in your pocket. So if you're outside, you can record a, a clip using the main camera or you can do a vlog. But I would also say as well, see with uh, most modern phones now, See if you get good lighting and you put this on a tripod, 
the footage is really, really impressive. Like honestly, there's been a few situations where I've tested the camera and then I've tested my Sony RX100, for example, and I thought the footage from my phone was better. So again, lighting, you know, good recording conditions. A smartphone, I, I would say, fits in to most people's recording setup, even if it's only for taking pictures of different things or of panning a few, you know, kind of smaller clips to insert into your video. A smartphone is excellent. And a smartphone is one of the reasons why I've not really went out vlogging. I mean, I'm not a big vlogger anyway. I've, I've did some videos outside, like, you know, I'm holding the phone up because I'm recording, uh, because I'm reviewing the phone. But as far as going out and, and, and vlogging every day with a camera, it's not something I want to do. I don't consider myself a vlogger. But I would say that a lot of people who do vlog, you could get away in some situations with a smartphone, despite the fact that, you know, they're miles behind cameras. Um, so yes, a smartphone will find their way, you know, a smartphone will find its way into everyone's setup. I've got a few other cameras here and I want to talk about what I like about them and what I don't like about them. Now, again, I'm kind of working backwards here, but let's talk about action cameras. And if I jump to my overhead camera, you can see that's that's probably too bright now. I'm going to have to change that. It does look too bright. I said it's bright against the white. That's the problem. I think it's, it looks good against this, but this white seems to reflect everything. Um, action cameras are really, really useful. They're really useful. And there's a lot of situations where an action camera is ideal. They're small. The stabilization is excellent. They're terrible in low light, but during the daytime and in, in good lighting, these things are excellent. Stabilization is good. You get really good wide angle shots. And these are great for vlogging. But what I would say is, I think I'm guilty of this. I think everyone's guilty of this, is that you buy an action camera and you buy it for like 400 or 500, like a GoPro or a Sony camera. And you have plans of using it all the time. And then you just stop using it. And this is the thing, when you're buying cameras, you're kind of restricted with, with what you've got. So you buy another camera, you buy an action camera so you can get the wide angle shots or shots when you're in the car. And then you might buy a macro lens for different things. And you will buy all these different lenses and cameras for different situations so that you can record different videos because in certain situations you are limited with what cameras you have. But I definitely think that with regards to buying equipment and not, lose, and not using it enough, I would definitely say that action cameras are top of the list. And I've did this every single time I've bought an action camera. I've bought it with the, intent, the intention of using it all the time. And then I haven't, you know, I, I just haven't used it. So bear that in mind because cameras always depreciate. So you need to kind of think about what you're buying. And if, if you don't think you're using it, you're probably better selling it. So with regards to these two cameras, this is the Sony AX, was it 3000? I think this one. Um, F, uh, yeah, X3000, I got that right. So this is a Sony X3000. Now this camera, I'm going to keep. My plan is with this one is to keep it in the car. Now what I will say is this is a GoPro uh, Hero Black 7 and the GoPro Hero Black 8 is out, which my girlfriend's got because I bought it for a trip. And the 7 and the 8 for the GoPro are much better than this because this is an older action camera. But the microphone quality in this GoPro is terrible borderline unusable. And I realize you can buy heavy adapters and all this with it, but it's an absolute pain in the ass. You know, the, the microphone quality is terrible. And it's the same with the GoPro 8. The GoPro 8 has a mic attachment which does improve things, but this Sony is just better. It's more practical. You've got the tripod thread down at the bottom so you don't have to use a case that, you know, it's just easier to plug it in. And at the back there, you have a mic port. You can just plug in a microphone. No accessory, no adapter, nothing else making it bulky. You just plug it in. But the great thing is, and if you remember the videos I did about this, the great thing about this little action camera is that you can get away without using an external microphone in many situations. You know, I've got a couple of external microphones. This is something else I'm looking to buy at one point. I want to buy another external mic. What are these cables doing? Um, and like when you put in the video micro, for example, if you put it into the GoPro with the accessory, the audio is so much better. When you put it into the Sony, I realize that it's better, but not by much. The built-in mics on this Sony are amazing. So this Sony is going to stay in my setup. The quality of footage is not as good as the GoPro 7 or 8. It's kind of in par with the GoPro 6, because that's when it was released. But the, the built-in tripod thread, 
the built-in mic port and the fact that the built-in microphones are all better means that when I'm recording in the car, this is the action camera that I would use. So the GoPro, great, footage is amazing, it is amazing, stabilization is amazing, but I just don't see myself using it as much as that one because the mics aren't good. It's weird, it's weird that the action camera companies aren't making microphone quality are, are, you know, one of the, the priorities. Why aren't they making it top of the list as far as features? Because since day one, GoPro mics have been terrible. So yeah, action cameras are good for vlogging devices. They're great in the car. I could, I can still use two, but I think what I'll maybe do is sell that at one point and buy another action camera as a backup. So let's move on. Let's move on. Here I've got the RX100 Mark III, which is actually several years old now. This is like, I think early 2010s. I think the Mark V was out 2015. This is the Mark III. Now this is still excellent and I still love it. I have used this so much over the years. You know, it's got USB charging, um, it's got the flip screen, it's got 1080p recording and I've recorded for hours on this and no problems with overheating or anything like this. This one doesn't have 4K, but even today, several years after this came out and several years after they introduced 4K, it doesn't matter because 4K can only be recorded in RX100 range for five minutes. So, you know, it's not an issue. The quality of uh, this camera though, the footage from the uh, video recordings, I think it's starting to look dated, which is no surprise. Several years ago, this came out, it was top, you know, it was top of the range. Everyone was raving about its video. But times move on. And as I said, there's many situations now where I record footage from my phone and I think it looks better than the footage from this camera. This is an excellent camera though. There's a few annoyances with this one. One being um, where this tripod thread is. They've put it next to the battery cover, which is annoying because you put in the tripod and then you need to take the tripod out if you need to change the battery. That's annoying. The flip screen is great, but obviously there's no uh, external mic port. There's no hot shoe uh, or cold shoe mount to put on an external mic or anything like that. So what you see is what you get. Microphone quality is okay, but it's not amazing. This one doesn't have the kind of video settings. It's more of a stills camera um, as far as all the features. But it's an amazing camera. I've absolutely loved it. The biggest problem, and I talked about this in the video through the week, the biggest problem with this camera is the focal length. It's 20, 40, 70, millim uh, 20, 40, 70 millimeters. And like I was saying, the lens that I'm shooting on right now, this, um, if I can get it back, the lens I'm shooting at right now is the 16 millimeter Sigma. And that's actually available not just for Sony, but for many different devices, many different cameras that that lens is available for. And that is recording it, you know, it's like a 16 millimeter equivalent. Um, is that equivalent? No, it might not be. I'm gonna double check that. Um, but that is a much better range than this one, which is 20, 40, 70. And I always find that with this camera is that even if you put it on a desk, you always seem, you feel like a little bit, you're a little bit too close. And you need to either hold it out there or you need to set it a way back. So yeah, it's time to upgrade this. It's too old now. And the footage is good from this, but it's too old. It's time to sell it on and it's time to get something better. That's it. It's time to get something better. So. What have I got here? I have got here the RX10 Mark One, not Two. So I spoke about the RX10 Mark Two earlier on because it's that's my overhead camera, and this was great. This has got you know it's still twenty forty two hundred. It's it's it doesn't have USB charging. No, this one does. This one has USB charging. It's something they introduced with the Mark Two. But what I've done with this one, as you can see, and it's why I can't actually show you turning on right now is I have got a big dummy battery. Now, dummy batteries, it can be risky buying them because if they're not officially supported, they can you know deliver too much power and damage the lens and things like that. There are a lot of scare stories out there, but when I bought this for this camera, I thought I've used it for several years. I've got my use out of it. So I bought a dummy battery. So I can plug this in now and just keep it charged. And yeah, I, I was using this for game streaming. I've, this was a fantastic overhead camera. It uses a, a one inch sensor just like the RX100, but the lens is absolutely amazing on it. And this isn't that expensive now. This is just a few hundred pounds you can pick this up on. It's an absolute bargain. But again, technology moves forward. It's, it's, starting to, it's starting to kind of look its age a little bit in certain shots. You definitely need good lighting with this because it's just not good in low light. 
certainly at home. Outside, you're okay, but in low light in the house, it's not amazing. So I'm just showing you this on top of it. This is a Zoom F8 audio interface. It's something I do still need to review as well. But you can see why I like this camera so much. You've, you've got the screen. Now, the screen here isn't like a reversible flip-out screen or anything like that. It's hard to actually show you because of where this is. But this flips out just a little bit here. Sorry, I'm getting out of the shot. But this just flips out a little bit. It just comes out to like here, which I can't really show you just now because of it's sticking down to the bottom of the base here. But this just flips out there. It doesn't go to the side. It doesn't flip up. You're kind of restricted with that. Now, that isn't a problem with the overhead camera because with the overhead camera, when this was above there, I would simply look at the footage there. And this is the same problem with the RX-10. I just look at the footage being recorded there on my computer and it, and it works well. I don't need a flip out screen for my overhead camera, but in a different situation, that would be obviously a restriction. Great thing about this is you've got a mic port, you've also got a headphone port so you can monitor your audio, then you've got your charging port and uh, your, sorry, your USB port, and then you've got your HDMI port. But you can see that lens there, it's fantastic. This is several years old, like I said, and, um, yeah, it's just just an excellent, excellent camera. But there's other cameras out in the market that I could probably get. And I, I guess this camera is an example of a camera that's still great, still great, but technology moves forward and there's better cameras out there in the market. And it, there does come a point when you think, why am I still using this with its limitations? You know, it's maybe not as good in low light or it's maybe, you know, it's not got USB charging, it's gonna not got all these things. And another thing is that I'm not using it as much. This, this is the problem I've got with all of these cameras. I'm, I'm simply not using them as much. So they're just gathering dust, they're just depreciating in value. So another reason why I'm thinking about selling all of these. This has been a great camera though, I can recommend it. So last on my list is my little Canon M50. This is my newest camera. Like I said, I did buy it, uh, buy it used, but I think it was only out a few months when I bought it used. Now this came out in 2018 and there isn't a direct follow up but there is a new M series camera, the Canon EOS M6 Mark II, which I've got there, that one. So that's a follow up to the M5 and it uses the same lenses, etc. So I'll, I'll bring over the overhead camera and we'll sh show you what this is all about. So this is the Canon M50 released two years ago and in 2018 many people said this was the best vlogging camera on the market. The best. And I can see why. It ticks every single box. You've got this flippable screen so when you're vlogging you can see yourself and you can see what's happening. But unlike the Sony RX100 series, you know that ZV-1, um, well the old cameras there have got a flip out screen. This one has got the, um, the hot shoe there. So you put the mic there, you put the microphone at the top, and then you swivel around this to the side. You can see yourself, you've got a better microphone on the top. It's quite a small camera as well. I mean, certainly when you compare it to something like an RX, uh, RX10, I mean, it's, it's a lot smaller. It's a portable little camera. So I can see why people say this is the perfect vlogging device. There's a lot of lenses for it out in the market as well. And yeah, it, it's a great little camera. But there's a lot of things I don't like about it, I'll say that. Now, before I talk about what I don't like, I'll just quickly show you the lenses. So, the one that's on just now is a macro lens, which it says it somewhere there, it's there. Macro. Macro. So, this is a, a prime lens, which means I, I can't zoom. And this one just gives you that beautiful bokeh effect. And it was an expensive lens, well, a few hundred pounds, but I've, I've not really been using it as much as I thought I would. Um, yeah, but it is, it is an, a... A great little lens. The other ones I've got here, this one is 18 all the way to 150. 18 millimeter to 150. If you only have one lens for this camera, there's a good argument for it being this one because at 18 millimeters you can still use it for vlogging. So you can still use this 18 millimeter. And I did, I went to Vegas for a conference and I took this, this lens alone because it was the only one I had at the time. And you can use it like that to vlog, but also you can zoom in and you can get really great sh shots with the zoom. So if you're only looking for one lens, that's a good one. But the one that really makes this a vlogging camera is this one. 
This is the lens that really made me love the M50. This is the 11 to 22. And again, this is a few hundred pounds. And 11 millimeters to 22. This is the perfect vlogging range. Absolutely the best range you can get for this camera. It's just absolutely amazing. And it's great. I mean, this camera's got great old focus, but it's this lens that I love about this camera. But it's just the perfect lens because when you're holding it here, it's not too zoomed in. You've got, you know, the, the whole area around you, but you can also crop the image back in. It's kind of like transforming your camera into an action camera, that kind of wide angle, but you've still got the quality of a, a compact, a, a compact interchangeable lens system. So I do like this camera, but there are better options out there. But I think the biggest issue for me has always been, well, there's a few things. The first one would be battery life is terrible. The second one being the battery indicator. Now I've been looking at firmware updates for this camera in the last day or so, and I'm hoping that there is a firmware update, but throughout the time that I've owned this, um, the battery, I think I've got an official battery in here just now. Do I? Yes. So this is the official Canon battery, right? Get it in there. So there's the official Canon battery, but I've also got some, like I think I've got like four of these really cheap ass ones, right? So I've got like four or five of these, right? Now, the problem is, with the official Canon battery, you've got, it's a three bar in the, a battery indicator system. So you've got three bars and I'm recording video and then it will go, oh, two bars. And I know when it goes down to two bars that I've got about two minutes of recording and then it will just, boom, cut off. And that's the problem with this, with this camera. There has been so many times where I have lost footage because it's went three bars, two, done. no one. It just goes down to zero and it's dead. I don't know why, it just, the battery indicator, it never told you the correct battery life. So that's with the official battery, with the official Canon battery. With the fake ones, it's even worse. So I thought this is a, obviously a problem if you're taking photographs, but if you're recording video, you need to know how much battery life is left. And with the fake battery, it would say three, and then just go to zero. Like you think you have a full battery or close to a full battery, and then, then it would go to zero. I have lost hours, dozens of hours of footage through this camera because of this stupid indicator system. And the problem with this is, this does not support USB charging. It does not support it. Now, <clears throat> when I bought this camera, I, I knew right away that I didn't like the fact that it didn't have USB charging, but I thought, well, it's okay, it's not a problem. I know my RX100's got it. I know that my other Sony ca cameras have got USB charging. It doesn't matter. I'm sure I can live without it. Turns out it's an absolute pain in the ass not having USB charging because at home, when I'm recording, it's just so much easier to plug it in. And I, I always find with this camera, the battery isn't great. The battery indicator is never correct. So you never know when it's going to just die. But I just find myself fidgeting with batteries too much with this because it doesn't support USB charging and it's really, really annoying. It sounds like, a, you know, I know this is first world problems, but it's really annoying when, you, when you're recording videos, you do spend, a, I hate doing it, but you do spend a lot of time messing about with cards and batteries and things like that, which is why I have this set up the way that I have it. And I really don't like the, the fact that I'm always messing about with the batteries and the battery indicator and things like that with this camera. Now, the camera that I was talking about there, the EOS uh, M6 Mark II, it's actually a little bit smaller than this camera because it doesn't have the, what do you call it, doesn't have the big viewfinder at the top. So this one has, um, well, this one really ticks a lot of the boxes that, I, uh, that this one didn't have as far as this new camera supports uh, USB charging, which is great. It also can do 4K and 4K in the Canon M50, when you do 4K in this one, it crops the sensor by, it's like 1.5. So all of a sudden you're super zoomed in. So 4K becomes almost unusable with this one for, for my situations anyway. But this new camera doesn't do this. It, it doesn't crop the sensor. So 4K with this new camera, USB charging, excellent. So this ticks a lot of boxes for me. If I am looking to sell some of these cameras, this new EOS 6 Mark II, well, come out the end of last year, this new camera does tick a lot of the boxes that this one did not tick. So it addresses a lot of the issues that I had with this camera. But the problem is, well, it's certainly an upgrade. This, you know, buying the Mark, um, 
the Mark or the M6 Mark II is certainly an upgrade, but it's not a significant upgrade. It feels more like a sidestep, if that makes sense. And I, I definitely think I've been guilty of that in the past. I think I'm at the point where, yes, I'm happy with the footage that I've got. Yes, I'm happy with the cameras that I've got as far as I can do videos and I can record videos. But I, I realise there's levels as far as quality goes and I need to step up a level. I mean, most of the cameras that I use, this is the newest one, but most of these kind of cameras, they're all several years old. It's time for me to get newer cameras, you know. Even the 6500, which, which I've got there, is like four or five years old at least. So I'm certainly at a point where I want to upgrade to the next level. Now, the Mark M6 Mark II is an upgrade. I'm just thinking maybe I should do a more significant upgrade. But that would definitely address the problems that I have with the Canon M50. And, and the good thing about using uh, the M6 Mark II would be that I could continue to use these lenses. I could just keep the same lenses, sell the body for the Canon M50, and then buy the body, the main camera for the M6. So it's definitely an option. I'm not going to rule it out at this point because it is still a camera that I am reviewing. But there are a few other options out there. I've been looking at the Fujifilm X-T3 and X-T4. Those are cameras that I'm looking at. I'm also looking at... Um, the Panasonic GH5 and GH5S, those are, you know, they're, they're kind of uh, known as being one of the best filmmaking cameras on the market. And, you know, you're talking, well, you can see there, it says two grand, but secondhand, you're still talking 1,400, 1,500 in the UK, I guess. Maybe, maybe a little bit cheaper if you buy used. So this is an expensive camera, but this can do 4K at 60 frames per second. You've got like dual memory card slots. You've got, I think this does 10-bit color as well. And you've also you've also got the Sony range as well. Sony have got the AR7 range, AR7 2S, 3, and now they've got the AR7 4. Again, these cameras are expensive. Don't look at that. You can buy it a lot cheaper than that. But these cameras are expensive. I mean, for these kind of cameras, this one retails at about a grand or so. Second hand, about 800 I think. But these ones, you're talking 1200 1500 second hand. More than that if you want to buy new. So that's that's the... That's the kind of situation where I'm in, where I do think that I want to upgrade these cameras. I want to address some of the problems with them. But to, to kind of summarize my, my thought on what Evil was saying, you're, you know, you've got all the cameras that you need. Technology moves forward and filmmaking moves forward and the quality of video recording moves forward. And I, as you know, I am a big advocate for buying used because the biggest thing with cameras and smartphones and action cameras, etc., the biggest expense is depreciation. These things depreciate like an absolute bomb. You can buy a camera for a grand and then one year later, you will, you'll be lucky if you can get 500 for it because it's now selling new at 750. So you've lost half, you know, in, in one year, you've lost uh, half the, the initial price. So depreciation is the biggest color with buying cameras, which is why I like buying used. And I also think cameras aren't like sm smartphones. Yes, you can get firmware upgrades, but it's not like you need to, like with a phone you buy a few years old, you need to worry about, is it still supported? Is the battery life any good and things like that? With a camera, you know, if, if, if this hasn't been upgraded in a year or two with firmware, I can live with it. You can buy replacement batteries. And a lot of people as well, they look after their cameras, which makes sense. If someone's going to buy a camera at 1,000 or 2,000, they're not going to be throwing it around like a smartphone. They're going to take care of it because they realize it's an investment. They want to look after it so that they can sell it to someone else. So I think that buying used is a great idea for everyone. I think it saved me a ton of money. And the way that I look at it as well, I could buy an average camera brand new or an excellent camera used for the same price. And I would always gravitate towards the one that can give me the better quality, the better footage and the better specifications, etc. So all of these cameras here, I do like them. I can use them, but they're old. Most of them are old. And the, one, the newest one has a lot of battery issues, lack of USB streaming and things like that that just do my head in. So I'm at the point now I think I need to upgrade them. And that's what I think I'll do. I'm going to go on the lookout for something. Maybe I'll go to the Canon. Maybe I'll get a Fujifilm X-T3 or X-T4. Maybe I'll go for the GH4, GH5S, probably GH5S or something like that, um, or the Sony range. A lot of these cameras are expensive and... This is the price, you know, these, these prices that I talk about here is without a lens, you know. And that's another thing. When you buy the more expensive camera, the lenses are more expensive as well. 
you know, you're buying an expensive piece of glass and you need to spend more money. So I will have to drop a lot of money, a couple of grand maybe to improve, you know, to take my YouTube channel, or take my video uh, footage to the next level. But I should be doing that because what is the point of all of these cameras just sitting there gathering dust? They're doing nothing but depreciating. So yes, that's my current situation. I am happy with my main recording setup here. I'm really happy with the A6500. I think the Sigma lens that I've got on this Sony is excellent. I love the overhead camera. I realize at one point, if I see a bargain, I could buy the RX10 Mark III or four, and I could use that somewhere else. But these cameras, apart from the little Sony, which I'm keeping because the microphone quality is good, these ones have to go. Unfortunately, they do have to go. So thanks for watching, guys. I know that this has been a very long video. I'm at 46, 47 minutes at this point. It's a very long video. I've waffled on a lot, but I wanted to kind of give you a behind the scenes look at the cameras and the equipment that I use to record videos for YouTube. I know it's something that a lot of you don't think about, but behind the scenes, there's a lot of equipment here that I've bought and I've not spoke about. And this can be an expensive game, which is why I'm still making a loss with YouTube and things like that. But this is an expensive game, but I enjoy it. I really do enjoy it. And, and I do, I'm, I'm a very, um, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm not going to say I'm a simpleton when it comes to cameras, but I'm definitely an auto guy. There's so much I need to learn about cameras. There's so much I need to um, try and improve. But I do know that technology moves forward, and a lot of these cameras are getting old. That that's the best way to put it. They're getting old. When your smartphone's at the point where it's producing better footage than your cameras, it's time to sell them and upgrade. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And I realise it's not for everyone, but I hope you've enjoyed it and. If you get any questions about the cameras that I've got, or if you get any suggestions as to what camera I buy next to replace all of this, I might buy two, but I think in the short term I'll buy one. But if you get any suggestions, please do leave a comment below and stay tuned this week. I have got a few videos about the Poco F2 Pro. I've spent a week with it. I've recorded all the footage I need for it, just about. So thanks for watching, guys. I will speak to you all very, very soon. Take care.